Digital Marketing Aligned to Classical Marketing. Arvind Bhandari, Executive Vice President, Director, Nutrition South Asia Region, Nestle, is here with us. Now, he is a corporate veteran. He has served in organizations such as ITC, JWT, PepsiCo, and Nestle across the South Asia and South Africa region, nurturing iconic brands such as Maggie, Lays, and Pepsi, to name a few. Now, he's been awarded the Asia One India's Greatest CMO in the 2016-17 awards. We are so delighted to have you here. Arvind Bhandari, please take us forward at day two of Tech Watch. Thank you so much. Uh, just a quick introduction. So I am a, a mass marketeer by profession uh, across a host of companies, with starting, off with, uh, yeah. starting off with ITT when I was in advertising for a couple of years. It was a company then was a Pepsi, a brand of the company, something in the same year. Monday more, the then came to Italy, uh, kind of work on leaves, initially as founding of the business, and then after a few looking to the uh, maybe looking at the whole backward integration, chips and so on, where uh, the market was consolidated. Uh, and then moved to Nestle, where I came for the last two years, uh, well, the magazine, uh, for a very long time, so the Nestle and so many years. Uh, and uh, sort of product after size, the Russian policy is the junior. And uh, I hope most of you can do Then worked in South Africa for about three, four years, so I think that's a good top magazine last year, worked in Jane. And now I'm in a uh, new question. My experience with the mass marketing, which is digital marketing, uh, the new password uh, is what uh, is keeping a lot of us busy. And for mass marketing, unlike uh, the previous one that I was doing with uh, uh, the democracy part of uh, you know, its creations, it is a lot of things. If you're moving from a space where uh, you have to manage both the classical marketing uh, and digital marketing, there are very different rules and sometimes uh, even different generations work on it. And if you look at people like us, uh, we've been brought up on classical marketing, uh, and if you look at the more techies, having people who take this data from Ola and Uber and so on in the matter, they are performance marketers. And it's interesting when you come uh, to a place where mass marketing is have to work with. Uh, the marketing because the rules of the game are somewhat different. Uh, but if it's fully aligned, um, that's where the opportunity is not to be excited. And so that has been uh, pretty much uh, my focus, uh, my interest in the last uh, few years. And of course, the graduate phase as the market has evolved. And today, we are able to sort of work on this together. Now, if I can quickly uh, highlight uh, what it is like in the particular part. Uh, Classical marketing is a lot of art. You know, if I can give you a small example, it's about the whole product out there. It could be uh, a mass distribution. So think of a Purple, a Pepsi, a Maze, think of a Mountain. And you're looking at a huge number of uh, consumer interactions. So it's about putting the bag out, it's about uh, getting a certain level of uh, awareness for reach, as we call it in the media uh, language, very early on. Uh, because of the dynamics of Fast moving consumer goods, which is where I first did the most part. The cycle of, of uh, product creation, delivery, and the sales at the end is very rapid. So, if you don't move at speed, if you can act at the speed, then when you have an issue. Uh, am, I, am I clear all of it now, or is it just to come? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's better, right? So the the mass marketing is all about scale deployment, and media, which is our classical media, is what perfectly complements uh, the the mass market here. Because let me give you an example. Uh, typically, FMCG products, especially on the food side, have a shelf life of five or six months, sometimes even less. If you're dealing in dairy products, uh, for instance, chilled, it could be even fifteen days. So you need to generate a consumer awareness, uh, which is of a scale and of a kind, which means it has to have reach and frequency where they see you and they are prompted to come and buy you off the shelf. Now, typically that sort of scale only happens with uh, TV media. Unfortunately, in our country, large TV, a large uh, population 
a very diverse distribution universe, uh, TV still delivers the best. Not only does it reach the maximum consumers, but it also reaches them actually very cost effectively. So a mass marketer has no option uh, but to go to TV because he needs to make uh, at least 70% people aware of his product, of which eventually only about 25% uh, will try it. And 5% of those are of the total universe, let's say, are going to be staying with you for repeated consumption. So it becomes very difficult to get back a lot of them doing it. And if you don't, then you have issues with your whole supply chain. Uh, now comes the Then you are able to uh, generate the, 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 the response. It is clear now, or I'm asking not a lot of it. Now, in digital marketing, uh, this uh, is not the case. What is the issue? Uh, is it better now? In digital marketing, the challenge is you are not able to get the same reach. Uh, the issue of digital marketing is A, uh, you don't get the requisite number of uh, your target audience in your category. So, let me give you an example. If you put a uh, product out which is distributed in which a million outlets in the country, a 10 lakh outlets, which is kind of a safe minimum for a uh, So, what happens is that you don't, you don't uh, get to so many people with digital. A, because you don't have platforms. B, uh, which is the more operational aspect, uh, you don't have that much inventory available uh, in, in a lot of these platforms. So whether you're talking about uh, a search or, or a social or so on, you don't get that sort of reach uh, because the inventory is not available. So what typically happens is that in the first or second week of TV, you, you strike a GRP of 200 or 200 plus, mm -hmm. and you get the requisite 60, 70% reach. In digital, it does not happen. Now, that's a risk you cannot take because your products are in the shelf and you don't get the consumer reaction. So that is the first barrier a mass marketer has to tackle with digital, which is reach. Uh, what people are doing now, therefore, is that they, they put the TV ad out and then they supplement with digital reach options. So from a reach perspective, it works well because you've got to a certain number of people who know you. And then the digital becomes an amplifier. Uh, it does not have the same urgency as TV, but it is certainly able to connect with consumers, build intimacy, build engagement, uh, and maybe even improve the chances of the repeat rates, which TV uh, may not be able to give you. So in a sense, the, the media issue is, uh, is tackled. Then you come to the creative aspect. Uh, the creative aspect uh, the creative aspect is a bit different in the digital space. If you look at the uh, the whole uh, creatives of uh, of the old classical marketing, it's it's a longish forty five seconds uh, duration. There is a duration of a lot of the standard run creatives, like you have to train to model, you make a creative, you run from TV, and you have to make it you can make it without the old beginning. In this case, however, you can actually produce it. You can go. You can talk to a child, a mom, a youngster, boy, girl, green, green, all those things are possible. So the whole field of space goes to the country. You have to try to be able now to come uh, a much more elaborate society. So you have to cut the same thing into smaller things. The thing that is something we haven't seen doing a lot in different things, the conventional uh, side of the future. But now it's something we can see not to do something we used to. And so how have we managed our basic space in between a big TV social and a basket social of all of this? What they're doing in clear for now, they're looking at a smaller copy of the main TV creator. The look and feel of the main TV creator. But they're not necessarily the edits or the smaller versions, but they're also adapted. They're also adapted to the consumer you're speaking to. So let me give you a small example. And this is something I'm taking from uh, from Levon Industries. And they did this very successfully. So they have this whole Levon hair serum, which is meant for uh, meant for uh, for girls and women. And they had a standard creative which talked about the issue, 
with grooming and they solved it with the standard creative. Now, when they came to digital platform, they actually resegmented their consumer. They took the consumer, which is the girl, uh, the woman, uh, the tween, and so on, and they actually sliced them up to not only different groups, but different groups. Uh, because you're able to actually uh, actually speak to consumer in their state of mind and give them their solution. So, so we move from a reach option to a more uh, sort of sharply targeted creatives for the consumers in consideration. And then you come to the eval evaluation metric. Typically, uh, in a mass media and a mass product, you look at the sales. Uh, now, actually, you have the opportunity to look at other metric, which was not available to you in the classical marketing. Now you can track your brand affinity. So in digital marketing, it's possible to see how consumers are feeling about your brand, how they're reacting, what is their view. So today now, uh, it's quite apparent that uh, what drives say With you, and then you, you go off. Yeah, Gitika, sorry. Can I go no, on? Please carry on. I'll okay. Just carry on. Yeah, I'm just giving a broad snapshot. So, yes, in the please, classical please, marketing, please. you have a consumer and you lose them uh, because you target them once and, and you don't speak to them one more time because you have nothing new to say. In digital, you can retarget them. So, if you spoke to them the first time with the proposition uh, and you haven't appealed to them completely, you can go second time, nudge them with a deal, with a promotion, with an offer, which gets them closer, or even with an experience, uh, which is the other thing. So therefore, it's a far more elaborate environment. Uh, I have Gitika recently, in fact, let me share with you, uh, put a book out to sort of close the gap between classical marketing and digital marketing. It's, in fact, a generation gap uh, where the new uh, custodians of marketing are not understanding how the classical marketers of, let's say, a decade back are working. But actually, we've tried to fuse them together into, into a model. And uh, I sort of sent some slides. If you can quickly put them out, I can explain. But there's an opportunity for, for now to actually look at the classical marketing tools in conjunction with digital marketing and evolve something which is very holistic, very powerful uh, for the new consumer. So if it is possible to have the slide, or uh, how does it? The team at TechMunch, if we can uh, uh, share his slides. It would sort of just put this into a conceptual over app and then you'll be able to understand. There you are, there you are. It's yeah. happening. So here's the book, Deepika, if I can just uh, 
to give you a bit of a snapshot of crack marketism. It's endorsed by people from the industry, you know, Prasoon, you know, Harsh Wright and Suresh, the, the MD of uh, Nestle. And the attempt really between my, between my uh, co-author, Trupti and I has been to, to look at marketing from a lens which is practical, uh, because I think a lot of it tends to be very theoretical. And digital is forcing us to be a lot closer to consumers, to be in their shoes, and therefore there's need to be really pragmatic in solutions and instant. Uh, a, a marketing solution which is very Indian, and I mentioned to you the example earlier of Live On and how our Indian consumers are asking for solutions which are pertinent to their environment. Uh, a solution which is very digital, of course, this is the whole deal now. How do we make digital sit very nicely uh, on the classical? So if I can just go to the next slide. Uh, yeah, this is the front and the back and just the next slide. And this is kind of a model which fuses classical marketing and digital marketing very simply. So if you look at what marketers do, they basically do penetration, which is to get, uh, which is to get more consumers and consumption on the y-axis, which is to get the same consumers to buy more. Now that's how typically we plot the consumers. Now, if you go to the, to the left, then in a classical marketing, what you do is you create awareness. So you have a product, you tell the consumer, they come and buy you. In digital marketing, you're moving from mere awareness to resonance. So it is not only about telling a consumer that you have a solution, but it is telling the consumer that you just don't have a yogurt, but you have a yogurt with vitamin, which is good for your skin. So you kind of go harder and further with your proposition and, and get a response from the consumer, an empathy, which generates a stronger response, more immediate and more lasting. Then if you go a little further, which is on the right hand side, where the situation is that if you have high penetration, which is a lot of people use you, but they're not using you enough. Then in that case, in the classical marketing, you didn't have many solutions because you were probably, let's say you were a Maggie, which was had at four o'clock. Now you go to with digital marketing, what I call the moments marketing, where you can talk to consumer, jab them now and then very gently saying here, morning time, miss breakfast, no problem, rushing to office, have a Maggie. In office, don't have the lunch, another occasion to have Maggie. So with sharp retargeting, sharp occasions that you can now choose with algorithms, which are very refined, thanks to the analytics that we have available, you can drive the brand consumption from a consumer who uses only once to maybe a lot more often. So therefore you have the opportunity to get into uh, occasions to moments marketing. Now, if you move up on the top side, which is the, the high ground of marketing where you have a lot of consumers and they use you often, which is your loyal user, loyal base of consumers. Now with digital marketing, you have an opportunity to turn those loyal consumers into evangelists. The, the whole dream of brand marketing is to convert your consumers into people who actually talk about you. The classic example being Harley Davidson, which does not need to advertise, or WhatsApp actually, where people talk about the platform because they're so close to it. With digital marketing, you allow consumers, you give them platforms, you give them opportunity, and they speak for the brand. So classical marketing becomes a lot more powerful. Your erstwhile loyal consumers sitting quieter have become a lot more vocal, and they're building the brand for you. That is the power of digital to you. And on the left hand side, which is the one where you consumers are a lot in number, they're, they're not, not so many number, but they're consuming often. I mean, think of a brand uh, of a niche set of consumers who have high consumption, but they're not many of them. And you want more of those people. So let's say you are a, are a, are a semi-luxury brand, like an SUV player who has a set of players, and you want to get more of those people. So what you go do is you go to e-tribalism, which basically in marketing sense means that you make a community of people who like the brand experience and they talk about it to other people who haven't used. But by the sheer appeal of their description of the usage of the brand, they will make it more popular. So an SUV consumer talks about his great experience of family outings, right? And suddenly a lot more people who did not think of SUV as an idea, uh, they thought of hatchbacks or saloon or the smaller cars are now looking at the larger cars because they see people like themselves. Now, digital allows you to go to those people with that experience, with that creative, and actually spread the net of your users. So in this grid, I've tried to explain in this book, and there are many such grids to help classical marketers and digital marketers uh, to come to terms with it. So this was, uh, this was Gitika, the broad summary on how classical marketing and digital marketing can work together on mass brands and, and really help uh, consumers grow, that really help mass marketers to build the business with the brands. Okay. I like that word there, pragmatism. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to use it. It's, it's pragmatic, mar pragmatic marketing for this complex nation of ours. Very complex nation of ours. 
<laughs> very complex okay you know what i i, I won't just sort of come out to the street like this but we we are trying to manage time here i mean uh, sure, thank sure. you so much uh for your time for all the efforts you've made and i'm sure our you listeners and our watchers have had as good a time as i've been listening to you thank you very much thank you so much i really enjoyed thank you so much